Hello and welcome to a new lesson in Linux. In this lesson we will be talking about the Advanced Policy Firewall, which is the ABF. The Advanced Policy Firewall is an IP tables based firewall system designed around the essential needs of today's Linux servers. The configuration is designed to be very informative and easy to follow. First, I will download it by this command over here. I press enter. Now I'll wait for it to download. I'll display the file and I'll extract it. Now I will get to its directory. And I will start the installation. sh install dot sh and press enter it have installed it now let's open the configuration file gi etc apf and then conf dot apf and as you see after you installed it it gave you the installation path which is this one and the configuration file path this one here now I'll press enter so now we will start configuring the APF but first I'll get here to this line devil mode and by default the APF work in devil mode that is when you start the rules will be flushed after 5 minutes this way if some rule blocked you from accessing the server you can't get back you can get back after 5 minutes after you have tested the firewall make it active by disabling the devil mode and to disable it I will change this one to 0 Now the next step I will search for IG underscore TCP underscore C ports and then equal twenty two and here next to IG underscore TCP ports the IGTCP indicates the port which will receive the incoming packets using the TCP protocol and here you have it by default 22 but we have changed it to 3212 so I will change it here and of course if you want to add any other port like the ones you have here in the example there is an example over here that you can open a multiple of ports at the same time for example here it has opened the FTP port which is 21 and like the Apache port let's say here I will add the Apache port with it which will be 80 and by that you allow anyone to connect to your system using those ports and of course you can do the same here with the UDP ports you can add one port or add a multiple ports 
and as you have here in the example you can make a range of ports if I type here for example from 21 until 143 this then will mean that it will open ports from 21 all the way up to 143 now I will save and exit and then I will restart the APF service it has restarted now let's see how to open a port for a specific IP via the APF first I will open the file etc apf allow underscore hosts and then dot rules as you see this file there is a simple explanation here trust based rule file to define addresses that are granted all or specific access through the firewall so I will add a rule now I'll get in the insert mode and scroll down under the hashes and then I will type my rule I'll type TCP two dots and then IN and then two dots D equal three two one two and then two dots S equal one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot thirty simple mistake here I'll change this comma to a dot and I will get out of the insert mode and by this rule I will specify this IP and make it the only IP that can connect to this port which is the shell port so I will save I will open the configuration file to complete the part because we have only did part one of specifying an IP if you remember I will show you now what I mean etc APF conf dot APF and I will search for the IG TCP C ports as you see down here we have allowed any IP to access shell via this port here so the rule that we have just did will not be applied because in here I have allowed all IPs to access shell from this port so I will delete the port from here and then I will save and restart the APS and by this rule we have made that there is no any IP there isn't any IP that can access the, the shell's port which is 3212 with a different number than the one that we have set in the rule the one with, that we have set in the rule ended with 30 and the IP of my computer ends with 9 so now I will start to connect and see what will happen for me Here I'll type ports number and press open.
as you see an error message occurred and that's because I'm trying to access the port from a different IP than the one that we have specified in the rule now I will get back to the shell now I'll clear the page now let's see how to allow outbound access to destination port for a specific user say I want to give the ability of accessing another port to the root only and set a rule that no other user on the system will be able to connect to a destination port let's have an example about what I have just set I will type ssh root at 192.168.1.1 and this command means that the root will access shell on another server which has this IP and I want to prevent all users from outbound access to destination except the root now let's see how can I do this rule I'll get to the VI slash etc APF conf dot APF and I will search for the eg underscore TCP underscore C ports and press enter and from here I will get in the insert mode I'll get down here to under the common outbound in the EGTCBC ports and here I will add 0 then two dots 22 and then comma and get out of the insert mode and this 0 here indicates the user ID of the root now I will save the file and I will restart the APF service now let's check out the, the, the rule that we have just did I will type ssh root at 192.168.1.2 and we have talked about this command I'll press enter as you see here I will have the ability to connect to this IP because I have specified the root only to have the ability to do that and here it's asking me yes or no if I press on yes on Y if I press on Y it will connect but I will get out now let's see if I try to connect to the same IP what will from another user what will happen I will switch to the user torque and I will type the same command again one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot two and I will press enter okay it seems here that I have made a mistake in the configuration file so I will get back to the configuration file and I will get back to the EG
and I will delete those lines here. And from here, I will add zero, then two dots, twenty two. So this change isn't from the EG UDP C ports, it is from the EG TCP UID. I will save. Now I will start the EPS service. And I will type the command to try to connect with this IP to this IP, I mean. If I press enter, as you see here, it gave me an option and it asked me if I want to connect, yes or no. Let's try the same command from another user, different from the root. Control C to get out and I'll switch to the user torque and I will type the same command again and press enter as you see it will not result in anything So I will press Control C to get out. Type exit. So now I'm back in the root and I will clear the page. Okay, now we will talk about something called the BFD, and it's a short form for brute force detection. Brute force detection is a script that runs on your Linux server and checks log files for authentication errors. When it sees recurring authentication failures from a certain IP address, it will instruct the APF to block the IP address. I will download it by this command here. And I will display the file. The file is here. I'll extract the file. The file is extracted. Now I will install it by the command sh. Oh, I mean I will get to the directory first by cd bfd minus one dot five, and now I will install it using sh install dot sh. Here it gave you the installation path and the path of the configuration file. I will view the configuration file of the BFD. From here, in this file, this is the BFD configuration file. You can, from this option here, which is named trig or trig, and here is a number, and here is an explanation for it. This is how many failure events must an address have before being blocked. You set the number that you want from here. For example, I'll make it 3. And from the email alerts, there is zero, which means off, and one means on. You will enable it. 
by adding one in here. And next to email address, in here you type your email address. And after you have finished editing the configuration file of the BFD, you save and then you will start the APF service. As you see, it has restarted. Okay, now let's see how the BFD will detect any brute force attempt. I will try to access shell using a wrong password more than three times. <clears throat> I'll type the user torque and I will wait for it to ask me for the password. I will type a wrong password. And I will type it again. And again. I'll keep on typing wrong passwords. As you see, it sent me an error message server sent disconnect message type 2 protocol error too many authentication failures for torque and without the BFD this message this error message will never appear for someone who is trying to access shell and it, he, will keep on, he will keep on guessing as long as he wants but you prevent this from happening by using the BFD. As you see, now it has blocked my IP. I'll press here on OK. As you see, now it has blocked my IP. I will uh, enter from the virtual machine and I will type file's name to see how it actually blocked my IP and press enter I will scroll down and as you see here added the IP which ends with 9 on the date and the time with the command bfd.sshd and that's the meaning of the block it has added it to the blocking list and from this file here you can view all of the blocked IPs and remove them now I'm removing this blocked IP and I will save and I will restart the APF service And as you see, this is the name of the file that we were just in, where you can block or you can view the blocked IPs and remove them. And by this lesson, we have talked about the APF and the BFD. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson.